All right, now, if that didn't get you crunk, if that didn't get you praising with your hands lifted, I don't know what will, uh, but so enjoy Tim Bowman and Faith City Music uh, and their entire worship department. They are amazing, and that song is amazing. If this is your first time hearing it, go and check it out. Go check them out on wherever you get digital music, YouTube, Apple Music, or Pandora, wherever. Uh, they are really just a blessing to the body. All right, family, there's always so much going on here in the life of our church. So let's take a look into this week's TWC News. Hey, this is Tamika. Hey family, this is Ronita and, and here's, here's your, your TWC, TWC news. news. Mark your calendars, TWC will be giving away hundreds of holiday food boxes on Saturday, December 17th at our Derby Campus beginning at noon. Holiday boxes will include ham or turkey with traditional trimmings and will be distributed on a first come, first served basis. Our desire is to provide meals to families who are in need. So please help us spread the word and we'll see you at TWC's Holiday Food Box Giveaway. TWC and the Kiwanis Club of Vulking have partnered to provide toys to the children of Greater Birmingham Ministries this Christmas. Please bring new toys for girls and boys to our Bessemer and Derby campus any Sunday this month. If you are unable to bring them on Sundays, we will also host a citywide toy drive at our Derby campus on Saturday, December 3rd from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Let's continue to make a difference in the lives of those young and old. Attention all men, it's time for TWC's first holiday fellowship event. Saturday, December 3rd from 3 to 6 p.m. at the John Hand Club downtown. Prepare to enjoy good food and good fellowship in a relaxed yet festive grown man environment. The cost is $25 and space is limited. Register on the app or website today and tell your significant other, I'll be home for Christmas, but on December 3rd, I'll be out with the fellows. Are you ready to sing glory to the newborn king? Well, this Christmas at TWC, we will have a live candlelight service on Christmas Eve, followed by a virtual service on Christmas morning. Both services will remind us of the unconditional love God showed when he left heaven and chose to come to earth in human form just for you and me. Full details are coming soon, but go ahead and mark your calendars now. For more about what's happening at TWC, visit our app or website. Hope you have an, an awesome, awesome week, week family. family. All right, yes, keeping you informed on everything and all things TWC. And if you do not have it, if you do not have it, you need to go and download our TWC app. You can get the app in the App Store on your iPhone or on your Android. Listen, download the TWC app so that you can stay connected to all things that are going on here in the life of the Worship Center. Promise you, it will keep you connected so that you can be a part of everything that we have going on here in our church. All right. It's that time. You know what time it is. <laughs> it's time for TWC Music Trivia. Listen, I pray this music trivia is helping everybody learn the words to the song, you know, because I've talked about, you know, growing up in church and when you don't know the words, you just say watermelon, watermelon, water, or just raise your hands and go into worship. All right, this week's TWC Music Trivia is what did Donnie McClurkin say to do when you've done all you can? Mm, once again, what did Donnie McClurkin say to do when you've done all you can? If you know the correct answer, I want you to email that answer to online campus at theworshipcentercc.org. Listen. I don't want you to send what you think is the right answer. Send the right answer. Once again, send it to online campus at theworshipcentercc.org. And if you're the first person with the correct answer, we've got a $25 Starbucks gift card just for you. TWC, lean in, lean in. Anybody ready for worship? I said, is there anybody ready for worship? If you're ready for worship, type ready for worship down in the chat. 
we're getting ready to go into our time of praise and worship. Don't forget, don't forget that the rebroadcast airs inside of our app at 7 p.m. Central tonight. After this morning service, you can stick, I want you to stick around for talk back uh, after today's service where we can begin to talk about and start some dialogue about today's sermon. Also, on Wednesday night, every Wednesday night at 6 p.m., inside of our Facebook community group, we have our TWC Wednesday night huddle. TWC family, let's go into worship. I'm Pastor Myron. God bless. Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Come on. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Come on, you can do better than that if you're glad to be in your right mind. Give God a praise. If you're glad about who God is in your, in your life, thank you, God, for joy, unspeakable joy that the world didn't give it. And the world can't take it away. Ain't that good to know? Ain't that real good to know? We just celebrated Thanksgiving. But how many of you know we don't have to just be thankful for Thanksgiving? Yeah, we can be thankful, Lord. Thank you that I can lift my hands. Thank you, Lord, that I can walk, that I have the mobility of my limbs. Lord, I thank you I got a roof over my head. I thank you, Lord, that I can call your name, Jesus. And things have got to change. I can call your name, Jesus. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. You've been good to us, Lord, today. Hallelujah. We will never get this chance again. How many of you thankful? Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, let's make the devil mad. I am grateful and I'm thankful. Yeah. Cause you've been real good. Yeah. Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases. People are slipping away. Economy's down. People can't get enough pay. As for me, all I can say is. Without homes, living out in the street, and the drag habits, some say they just can't beat. Mothers and robbers, no place seem to be safe, but you and my protection every stop on the way I want to stay. Oh, 
give him a praise. If he's been good to you, come on, tell him thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. Tell him thank you, thank you. Now, don't clap this time. Open your mouths and give God a great praise for who he's been. Yeah, come on, thank him. Thank him today. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, he's still worthy. Hallelujah, you've been good to us, Lord. We thank you. Thank you for your presence in the room today. Lord, you've been good to us. You've been good, you've been good, you've been good, you've been good. One day I got up and I just started telling the Lord, just thank you, Jesus. And that was the whole day for me. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going in the store. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sitting on the plane saying, thank you, Jesus. I get off the plane saying, thank you, Jesus. I walk into my house. I say, thank you, Jesus. I get food and put it in my mouth and I say, thank you, Jesus. I get the water and I can swallow. Thank you, Jesus. You know how many people can't say that? Woo! You've been good to us. Oh, eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. I love you today. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Oh, because you cared for little old me in such a special way. That's why I praise you and I lift you up and I magnify your name. Woo! That's why my heart is filled with praise. Can you help us sing it? Everybody sing, I love you. I love you. Yes. I love you. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Because you cared for me. Because you cared for me. Oh, hallelujah. In such a special way. In such a special way. That's why. That's why I praise you. And then tell him I lift you up. If your heart is filled with praise. Now right here, no music. Because sometimes with the music we get caught up and we miss it. Now just begin to worship him right there. No music. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. You've been good to us. Thank you, Jesus. Forgive us of our sins. Those things by commission or omission. Thank you, Jesus for sparing our lives one day. You gave us another chance, not a second, not a third, but another chance. 
to honor your name today. You've been good. You've been good to us. You've been good. 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 And 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 you've been good again. And you're still good. You still could, you're still strong. You still mighty, you still strong. Oh, greater is he that's within me than he that is in the world. Mm, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Lord, we honor your name. Thank you for pulling us through. How many of you have been pulled through so many times? You're like, Lord, I'm probably getting on your nerve. Thank you for pulling me through. Yes, God, we honor you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Only you know how to make a moment like this. We receive the blessings of the Lord. I have gone through Thought it was you Oh, through all All I have gone through Lord, it was you hey, It was you It was you Pulling me Pulling me through Everybody sing through all Through all I have I have gone through Yeah Lord, it was you With my hands lifted up to you, Lord Through all Yes, God I have gone through Yeah Lord, it was you And I'm so grateful It was you. It was you. Pulling me. Pulling me through. When I look back over my life, I realize. It was you. Hey. Lord, it was you. Pulling me through. Pulling me through. And then I like this part. It says, when I stumble. You got to say that like you really mean it today. Hey, it was you. It was you. Lord, it was you. It was you. He'll never walk out on you. No, never. No, never. He'll never walk out on you. No, never. No, never. Can you have me say? 
convinced. you convinced about it. No, never. Last time for real. He'll never. He'll never walk out on you. No, never. No, never. No, never. No, no never. never. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you the honor, we give you the praise, we give you the glory, for you truly alone are worthy. We thank you on today, oh God, for pulling us through, oh God. Pulling us through yet another day of trials. Pulling us through, through another day of depression, oppression. Pulling us through, oh God. For if you pulling us through, that means you're holding on to us. Do not, do not walk away from us, Father. Continue to hold on to us. Let us remember that you are truly our Abba Father and that you chase after us, that you left the 99 for the one and we are that one. So Father, as you continue to pull us through, let us remember that you're pulling us through to victory, that you're pulling us through to the other side, that as you pull us, oh God, that we lay down anything that so easily beset us, oh God, that we lighten the load so it'll be easy for you to pull us through. So God, we thank you on today, oh God. We give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you the praise. We're gonna continue to lift you up, oh God. We will not let the rocks cry out for us on today, oh God. We will continue to allow you and give you the honor and the praise that's due your precious and glory name. Oh God, we thank you for pulling us through another day, another time, another trial that we will not be ungrateful for the times that you pulled us out of the muck and the miry clay, oh God. That you cleaned us up, that you set us on the path to righteousness, oh God, to the right things. It is in your mighty and matchless name that I do pray. Amen. And thank God on today for pulling us through. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, Worship Center. This morning, we are going to read our scripture together as responsive reading as a congregation. Our scripture this morning is coming out of the book of Matthew. We're going to be reading from chapter 5, and we're going to start at verse 3. Amen. Our scripture should be on the screen so that we can all participate together. Starting at verse 3, it reads, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be healed. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are ye when men shall revile or revel you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Altogether, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets will. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, readers, and doers of his word. Amen. Amen. 
You know, I was at, um, coming here, I had to take a later flight to get here, and I saw a man who had a daughter who was in a wheelchair, and um, I thought it was just him by himself, but I'm sitting there watching him, and because the baby couldn't eat, and she looked maybe to be, I don't know, eight, nine, and so he has a needle, and he's feeding her through the tube. And so he's feeding her here on the side, and then he's through the neck, and then he's smiling. Why he's doing it. And I looked at him, and I never got a chance to just tell him, just to watch you have joy feeding your child. Now, this is a man. Mom's always on it. You know, I'm not saying the dad's not, but you normally see the mother doing it. But I watched the father, he was going around uh, the carriage and then he would come over here and then he'd feed her over here and then he'd go and he'd wipe her and, and then he would do a little something to let her know, like, I love you. And then he'd go back and then all of a sudden I see the rest of his family come. Then I see the sisters get up and go over there and like love on her. And then they go back to their spot. And then when we landed, I saw them again. They taking pictures with her. And I think that's how God loves us. Yeah. He's feeding us. And then he's smiling at us. And then he comes back and he feeds us again. And then he loves on us again. How many of you love Jesus today? How many of you do him the same way? You smile at him, thank you. Woo! His goodness and his mercy covers every part of our lives. I don't care what you're going through today. His goodness and his mercy, his favor, his grace, who he is. Woo! Cause you've been good to me, Jesus. Lord, you've been good. Words cannot explain how good you've been to me. Oh, when I think about the goodness of Jesus. Oh, that is done for me. We adore you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We lift our hands, Lord. We open our mouths, Lord. We think of the goodness of all you, God. Oh, hey, Lord. Running out. 
supposed to do. But your goodness is running out Every day, every day of my life, your goodness is running out Running out Your goodness is running out. It's running out to me. I'm so glad it chases me. It chases me. When my life I give you everything. Hallelujah. Your goodness is running out to me. You sing it, everybody. Your goodness. Say it like you mean it. Open your mouth. With my life, with my life laid down, I give you everything. Lift your voice and say, it's running out. With my life laid down. With my life. say with my life with my life laid down are you laying it down everybody say oh hey with my life laid down I'm giving you all of me Jesus my finances my dreams with my life With my life laid down, I surrender now. Give you everything. Your goodness is running after. Your faithfulness is running after. Your protection is running.
for breaking the chains, oh Lord, for setting my soul free, God. Your goodness, your goodness, your goodness, Father. And thank you, Lord. Well, family, good morning. Good morning to the welcome. Good morning to the worship center, Father, help me. The worship center, Christian church where we exist as the hub, we exist to honor God, to unify communities and to build people. It is your soul that we are concerned about. On behalf of Bishop Van Moody and his beautiful wife, Dr. Ty, we want to extend a warm welcome to you this morning to our online family, good morning. We love you to all of our campuses, to everyone across this nation and this world. We say good morning. We are so glad that you're here to worship with us this morning. And to our first time guests, if you're in the house, good morning. We extend a heartfelt welcome to you as well. And if you would, please, family, pay attention to the QR code. The tech team will put it on the screen, but it should also be in front of you or behind you on your seats. You can scan this QR code for anything you need to get connected to us here at the Worship Center Christian Church. Do you want to be baptized? Do you need special prayer? Are you concerned about something that's going on in your life? Did you lose a loved one and you need to get connected to our services? This QR code is where you get started. And from there, you'll go on to your next steps, including giving. Family, let's prepare our hearts and minds for our giving talk this morning. If you would turn your attention to our screens. For some, Malachi 3 is looked at as a request, a command, even a demand from God. The focus is only on what God requires of his people. But when you allow your heart and mind to move past the back and forth of whether to give or not, the benefits and covering that only our God can provide is what should resonate within your soul. I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Your crops will be abundant. For I will guard them from insect and diseases. Your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe. Today, as you prepare to give, silence the voice of the enemy. His desire is to leave you exposed with no covering. I ask that you trust God and do one of three things. Number one, if you are still a little uneasy about tithing, try our 90-day challenge. You'll find information on our website and app under the Give tab. Number two, Give cheerfully online at twccc.org via our mobile app or by texting the amount you desire to give to 45888. And number three, for those who have already committed to our Go For It Capital campaign, thank you. For those who have not, it's not too late. Complete your pledge form online or in our app today. Thank you, not only for giving to God through TWC, but for taking God at his word and trusting that his covering will supersede anything the world can throw your way. Family, I trust that if you're giving this morning, you've got your gifts together for the Lord. So let's recite our giving confession together. And it reads, Lord, we give now out of our faith, obedience, and trust in you. You own everything. All that we have and will ever have comes from you. You promised if we put you first, you will take care of all of our needs. You are our number one priority. We will not treat banks, bills, and other things better than we treat you. You promised that if we tithe and give, you will bless us beyond measure and give back to us far more than we give to you. So today we give, expecting your will and blessing to permeate every area of our lives for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Family, love you. Amen. One of the things that I learned at an early age is that often the front door of depression is discouragement. And if discouragement is not handled adequately, 
it easily then can descend into depression. Depression is not limited to who it affects. Truth is, depression can affect all of us. Elijah was a tremendous man of God. He's a great example of the fact that it doesn't matter how anointed you are, it doesn't matter how saved you are, it doesn't matter how accomplished you are, you can still experience discouragement and depression. And if you and I are going to defeat depression, then number one, we have to understand the four mental games of depression. What are these four mental games? A, focus on the facts, not your feelings. The Bible never tells us to get in touch with our feelings. It does tell us to get in touch with the truth. And it's the truth that sets us free. Second mental gain that leads us to depression is that often we start comparing ourselves with other people. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. Here's another mental gain. Don't take false blame. Whenever you assume responsibility, that God never intended for you to have, that's too heavy of a burden. Here, here's the fourth mental game. Don't exaggerate the negative. Listen to what he says. Ain't nobody else up in here living right, Lord. Listen to how he exaggerates the negative. I've been out here slaving for you, Lord. Everybody else crazy. The enemy can't stop God's plan for your life, but the enemy can get you so discouraged that you stop pursuing God's plan for your life. I am teaching to somebody up in here. But then secondly and finally, you got to understand God's remedy for depression. The first one is, A, take care of your physical needs. God's initial remedy for Elijah's depression, food, water, and rest. Sometimes getting rest is the most spiritual thing that you can do. Man, a nap will bless your life. Do you hear what I'm trying to tell you? Second thing is this, the remedy, give your frustrations to God. God is okay with you talking to him in regular talk. Sometimes I'm like, now, Lord, here's the thing. They, they are showing up tripping, but I am not going to lose one minute sleep over this because you are my shepherd. You told me to cast my cares upon you. And so I'm going to give this thing over to you. I'm going to turn on something on television and laugh and I'm going to go to sleep because God, you know they tripping. You know they were crazy when you sent me there. So you need to deal with them. I'm not going to stress out over this. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How do you follow that? Jesus. Oh my God. You all had an awesome Thanksgiving. Oh my God. I, I call Thanksgiving America's favorite indoor sport, which is eating. You know, one of the things I love about Thanksgiving is when you're done eating and you're laying on the couch and you yawn and you feel that pain in your stomach because <laughs> you ate too much. Oh, my God. Well, it's good to be here in the house of the Lord. It's good to be here. Uh, I want to give honor to my wife and my children. <laughs> Listen, who, who, who is doing these children's schedules? I mean, there's just too much activities. I'm like, why do four-year-old, uh, fourth grades have to play state championship? Like, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Oh my God. Um, on behalf of our bishop, I want to thank all the pastors who serve in this house. Volunteers, ministers, people who stand in the parking lots, children's church, behind the cameras, sign language, the men in blue, the people that clean after when we are all gone. My prayer is that while you serve God, may he serve you and your family. Worship leaders, Mr. Gay, up and down on the plane, bless you. Bless everybody who serve. May the Lord bless you mightily in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, standing here is one of the most dangerous things in the world. Seriously, because what you say, people believe. The job of a shepherd is not to grow sheep. One sheep eat 1,460 pounds of grass a year. 
Two sheep, multiply that by two. Ten, multiply that by ten. One thousand sheep, ten thousand sheep, five thousand sheep. So which means the job of the shepherd is not to raise sheep, but rather to cultivate grass so that the sheep can eat. So for the man, for the man who stand here every weekend to preach, to cultivate the grass so we can eat, may the Lord bless you, Bishop, wherever you are. I have the awesome responsibility to talk about grief. It's, it's an attempt to explain the unexplainable. Amen. An attempt to quench the hearts of men with words, yet it seems impossible. So if you're looking for a title for this message, it's called Grief, but Making Peace with the Past. My first encounter with grief, I was 10 years old. I was in a class, and there was a girl in my class I had a crush on. Very cute. <laughs> and she lived in my neighborhood. So the way we used to sit in class was in rows. Boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. And how they determined that was based on your grades, on your scores. So if you are number one in boys section, you get to sit over here. Number one in girls section sits over here. So this girl in my neighborhood, she was really smart. She was always number one. All right, all right. I was over here, number five, ten-ish, <laughs> over here. That's where I was. So I, I desired to sit next to this girl in class. So I worked hard one summer. And I was number one, and she was number two, and all was good. The next semester, we were sitting together. So we live in the same neighborhood, so we walk from home to school, we sit in class together, and walk back home together. Perfect situation. <laughs> so first week goes by, and it's awesome. Everything is great. This is what I've always dreamt of. <laughs> Thursday, she doesn't come to school, second week. The teacher, you know, Portia, absent. Friday doesn't come. So we figured, hey, man, Monday, I'll see her in school on Monday. Or I'll meet her where we start walking together back to school on, uh, back to school on Monday. And Monday, she doesn't show up at our meeting spot. I go to class, we sit there, the teacher comes and he says, as soon as I talk to you guys, I want you to grab your bags and go home. So we all grabbed all our stuff, put it back in the bags. And she says, unfortunately, Portia passed away over the weekend at the hospital. And that was my first encounter with grief. It made me sensitive to human needs. And as a pastor, one of the things I was taught when I graduated in Bible school was that I promise you, my bishop, bishop uh, back then in Zimbabwe, Bishop Tura Bismarck, pulled me aside and said, son, I promise you three things. Pain, sacrifice, suffering. As a pastor, you always get those. If God blesses you, that's a benefit. But those three, that's your portion. And I can stand here and tell you that I am probably a pastor because of that event back then. Grief is challenging. It's a mystery that none of us can really explain. So in these few moments that we have together, I'm going to try to do my best, not to make light of it, but also to give us a perspective so that we all can be on the same page and understand what 
actually happens when we die and then also how we deal with grief. First Thessalonians chapter number 4 verse 13. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death. Pay attention to that phrase, sleep in death. So that you do not grieve like the rest of the mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep. Paul is saying we believe, not I know, we believe. Three things from that scripture. You must be informed. Yes. Number two, we must grieve. And there is a way to grieve. Number three, the way to grieve is with hope. Some might ask, hope for what? An expectation of what's to come. Of waking up. So in other words, if you are born again and you are saved, you do not die. You sleep in death. Why do you sleep? A person who's sleeping at some point, they have to be what? Wake up. Matthew chapter number five. Blessed are those who mourn. We just did, we just read the scripture up there. This is the second thing that comes out of Jesus' mouth when he started his ministry. The first one was blessed. Blessed if you... Poor in spirit, sorry. Blessed are poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And the second thing is blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Which means when you are mourning, you are what? Blessed. How are you blessed? You will be comforted. Which means that every single one of us sitting here, you have a responsibility. And that responsibility is to make sure that when you know somebody is grieving, you have to be a source of comfort. This is why, brothers and sisters, you should never look at a human being and just decide that maybe you should utter whatever it is that you choose to utter whenever you choose to utter it. Because most likely... Your words will force somebody to go to the deep end. Genesis chapter number 37, verse 34. Background story to this. We have Jacob. He's got a bunch of kids. One day he says to his younger son, he says, hey, I want you to go and check on your brothers, wherever they are. So he went looking for his brothers. And the scripture says, they saw him from a distance. And this dysfunctional family decided they would either should kill him. Look at what they're trying to kill him for, dreaming. If you are threatened by dreams, you are a baby. Amen. So let's kill him. Oh, they say, no, you know, let's sell him. So they're having this debate amongst themselves. Watch. This is a generational curse. Because their grandparents, they had an issue over here. They wasn't sure whether it was Esau or Jacob. Mother thinks it's, 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 it's Jacob. The father thinks it's Esau. So they are tricking each other in the same household. And this generational curse comes later on and shows up over here. And here comes this voice. Heinous crimes. They are arguing amongst themselves. Joseph ends up in Egypt. So they decided, let's, let's take his court. Let's kill a bunch of goats and spray it. And take it back home. Every time you see gods mentioned in scripture when it comes to such things like this, you have to know it's the spirit of the Antichrist. So they take this clock and take it back to his father and he says, Daddy, 
Your boy is no more. And they gave it to his father. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put on a sackcloth, and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, I will continue to mourn until I join my son in the grave. So his father wept for him. These boys ate dinner every day with this man. They washed him waste away. Christmas came. They were in his house. Nobody said a word. Easter came. They were in this house. Nobody said a word. Some of them took walks with their daddy. And on that walk, nobody said a word about Joseph. They smiled at him. They listened to his stories. And they washed the old man waste away. And said absolutely nothing. And the man refused, refused to be comforted. What is death? In order to answer this question, let's start with the question, a bunch of questions. How many of us here wants to be holy? Amen. Totally holy, Amen. devoid from sin. It's just a few? Not everybody? <laughs> Everybody's hands should be up right now. How many wants to live a sinless life? How many wants to hear God clearly? And then you respond to him? Pretty much everybody, right? What if I tell you that the doorway to that life is through death? Because as long as you live in this life, your flesh at some point is going to interrupt whatever it is that you are going through. So death really is a doorway to a much better life or the ultimate life. That's why the scripture says when you receive salvation, you don't die. You sleep in death but in order to understand what death is you have to be alive which means which means the question becomes now what is being alive Ephesians chapter number 2 as for you you were dead in your transgressions and sins key word you were dead a person who is not saved is a living cop. This is why when you're trying to talk to people, it's like, how come they don't see this? The reason they don't see it is because dead people don't respond to things. That's why the Holy Spirit, that's why the scripture says, nobody comes to the knowledge of who God is unless the Holy Spirit revives them. And this is for those who wants to minister to family members. You got to recognize your prayer should not be, Lord, I want to help them to touch, I want to touch them so they can come to the knowledge of salvation. Your prayer is that may the Holy Spirit minister to them so they can become alive. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. In other words, we were born on our way to hell. But because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive in Christ Jesus. Even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you've been saved and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly places. So in other words, you are alive because of Jesus. So when you die, you die in him. Which means you sleep in him. 
until the day comes where you have to be resurrected. Now, second definition. What are emotions? This will all make sense. Just hang with me. Emotions are a set of negative and positive reactions that human beings experience in response to events or a situation. It's how we express ourselves in relation to the world around us. And there's two categories of emotions, negative and positives. And by the way, this is what's tied to what your purpose in life is. Your purpose in life is not what you do for a living. What you do to earn a living is just what you do to earn a living. Your purpose in life is the strongest emotion you carry that serves you and serves other people. If somebody is grieving, what do they need? Comfort. Who provides comfort? Another person. Right? And compassion. Right? Are all people capable of giving compassion? No. Because no. there's some people, if they hug you, you feel like, oh, this is Jesus. And some people hug you, you're like, whoa, what was that? <laughs> the reason for it is because some of them are hugging you from a place of purpose, which is a compassionate spirit. So your purpose really is the strongest emotion in you that edifies other people when they are in need and it also edifies you back. Fear is a necessary emotion. It is necessary because it causes you to be careful. Worry is a necessary emotion. It aids us in being cautious. However, too much of any of these emotional traits is dangerous. A fear of lions is good. Because if you ever find yourself on safari in Africa, you will not be frivolous. Because you know Mufasa, but shout. Right? However, excessive fear of lions will actually prohibit you from watching the Lion King. So emotions are necessary. They aid, to, they aid us. If I am to ask you to be excited for 24 hours, is that sustainable? No. It's not sustainable. Which means that grief, while it's extremely important, it's not sustainable to grieve 24 hours. It's not. Because it will wreck you. Which brings us to this question, what is grief? Grief is a normal emotion designed to help us when, we, when our souls feel detached from people we can no longer physically or emotionally interact with. Grief helps us to deal with the void left by loved ones. Grief is love expressed in tears and sorrow. Grief is actually a measurement of how much we love and enjoyed our relationship with the dearly departed. This is why we don't grieve for people we don't love. But when you love somebody, you grieve for them. So when you are in grief and it seems overwhelming, you have to tell yourself, this is the true measurement of how much I love that person. What grief is not? Grief is not a sickness. Which means there is no cure for grief. Because it's not a sickness in the first place. Grief is not a negative emotion. It's not a negative emotion. It's positive emotion. Designed as a coping mechanism yes, yes. to aid to our lives. Grief doesn't affect your body. It affects your soul. And this is how I know. The scripture, we all talk about this. That every single person has a God-side void, right? Inside of them. 
that only God can feel, right? Why do we have that void? Because when we were separated from God through Adam, right. that void was created, right. right? So which means we died and God moved further away from us. So we have this void. So God in his infinite wisdom, he comes now and starts laying a foundation for us to be brought back. So which means that when people leave us, it's the same thing. Where we, are, we have this void that's created. And we have to start filling that void. Not with junk, but there are things that we have to fill that void with. So that we can remain healthy and living. So grief affects your soul. And what is your soul? The soul is the nucleus of the human being. It is the center of your growth and development. When God communicates with us, brothers and sisters, he communicates with us through the soul first. Your mind now has to interpret what he said. This is why when God speaks to us, your soul is engaged. Why is your soul engaged? Because that's the very part that comes from him, right? Yes. And God created man and breathed into him and he became a living soul. Yes. So that's why when God speaks to us, he talks to the soul, yes. which is the part that comes from him. Yes. 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 The soul is not spirit, neither flesh. It is a combination of both spirit and body. Yes. The soul is the indescribable thing that becomes alive when the spirit enters the body. Three components of the soul. Your mind, your emotions, we just talked about it. The support system of your life purpose, your emotions. Then your heart, which is your intent, not this organism. Let's talk about the mind a little bit. Your mind, the human mind has three functions. The first one, is imagination which is the ability to solve problems you solve problems because you have an imaginative mind right the second is memory the middle one is idleness which is your subconscious so when you are awake like now your conscious mind is taking on information Right now you hear me, right? And you're hearing what I'm saying and your mind is taking on information. When you fall asleep, your conscious mind hands over to your subconscious and you start processing what you took in while you were awake and you start storing what's necessary and what's needed, discarding that, what, that, that which is not needed. This is why when God speaks to us, most times he speaks to us in dreams. The reason for it is because the human ego is sleeping. So you can't interrupt what he is saying. Because when your mind is engaged and God tells you, I want you to walk 100 miles, your first inclination is, this is crazy. <laughs> but if you have a dream of you walking 100 miles, you're going to wake up and ask yourself, what does that mean? So your mind, your mind is the center of it all. The problem with the mind is it cannot do all three at once. Which means that when you are grieving, you are which part of the mind? Memory. Because you're remembering people. You're remembering what they meant, what they did, where we went. Look at the pictures and you, you're enjoying all the things. And that part of memory starts working in your soul. And while you are grieving, it's actually impossible to start imagining things. That's why you hear people say, I can't imagine my life without them. The only time you get relief, when you fall asleep. When you wake up, it's right in your face. 
And now, when it's in your face, you're living in the past. 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 Watch now. We always talk about, oh, time heals. How? The only time heals is when we start creating memories over here. Right? So that this here becomes further and further and further away. So we need to understand those things. Here's the rationale of why we are saying all this. We are not seeking healing from grief since grief is not sickness. We are rather seeking relief. We are seeking relief. What complicates grief is not grief itself. What complicates grief is when grief is coupled with other negative emotions, such as guilt, anger, regret, resentment, anxiety, bitterness, unforgiveness, self-hatred. You take that, you combine it with grief, or there's a fire. So which means that our responsibility if we are to avert our crisis and amend the dilemma and predicaments of our life, we have to separate grief from all these other negative emotions. How do we deal with grief? Number one, you have to accept comfort. Matthew 5, 4. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. You have to accept comfort because it brings blessing. If you want to be in trouble, refuse comfort. So you have to accept when it comes. Give it to me. Number two, never stop searching for relief. You cannot stop searching for relief. Which means there is no one size fit all to grief. There is a plethora of things that you have to make sure they are in place. That you can do to find relief for the day. Number three, create new relationships or volunteer services. Number four, grow from loss because God does not waste pain. You know the problem with us? Somehow, I don't know where this began, but we are taught that somehow we'll get to a place where life is just smooth and cruising. There are three things in life that are constant. Pain. Constant work. Always be working on something. And sacrifice. So most times in life our failures comes when we refuse to roll with the punches. By denying your current situation, you then shut the door of opportunity for your mind to pursue in creativity the ability to find solutions and relief that you need for that moment. I can't believe this is happening. Once you say that, you're already pushing the idea of finding a solution. So the first thing is to say, yeah, this is what's going on. This is why I hate the word, I am fine. How are you? I am fine. Because once you say you are fine, it shuts all manner of conversations. Our lives can and will never be detached from these three things. Pain and certainty. The highest level of human creativity always comes through adversity. Without pain, we never grow. When we are chilling, oh, we are the waste. But when you're in trouble, your mind kicks in into higher gear. Your willpower shows up 
and you start figuring things out and finding solutions to things that you wouldn't ordinarily seek solutions to if you were just sitting with your legs up watching something. Number five, do not isolate. I'm telling you guys, if there's one thing all of us should learn is to never isolate. 1 Peter 5.8, it says, Be alert and sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone he can devour. In order for you to understand this scripture, you have to ask yourself, what does a roaring lion on the prowl look like? I am from Africa. I have seen real Mufasa. A lion that's on the prowl, it lies over here 200 meters away observing the plains and what he's looking for is weak animals he's looking for animals that are injured he's looking for animals that have separated from the group he's looking for animals that are unaware of their environment he's looking for animals that feel like they can do things by themselves and while he's over here he scans and he sees that one he says yes Injured, lonely, isolated, nobody around, and I'm coming for you. So when the scripture says he is prowling, looking for whom he can devour, if you are in isolation, you are easy pickings. You cannot isolate in anything. This is why Minister Gay... The greatest songs to be ever written. It's a bunch of people. It's a bunch of people. Because there is strength in numbers. Number six. Our hope is in what's to come. Revelations 21.4 Then I saw a new heaven and earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down of, out of heaven from God, prepared as a bright, beautiful dress for a husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, no mourning, no crying, no pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down for these words are uh, trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirst I will give water without a cost from the springs of water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this and I will be their God and they will be my children. The last one, grief begets meaning. Your grief begets meaning. We talked about Joseph, right? Remember Joseph? So the old man is grieving because he thinks his boy is gone. He had given Joseph the field in Samaria, Shechem. He goes over there and in honor of his son, he digs a well that was so deep. Because Joe is no longer here. So in order to preserve his memory, I'm going to dig a well that is so deep in the field that I gave him. So that generations from now, people will remember and know that Joe was here. Fast forward 14 generations later. Over there. Here comes Jesus. It's just chilling. Jesus is walking. He sits at this well. And while he's sitting at the well, 
The scripture says a woman shows up. And this woman comes from the city called Samaria. And if you really want to understand what was going on, you have to ask yourself, how was Samaria created? The king Omri, who was the king of Israel's son, was a horrible king. And the scripture says his son did horrible things more than any other king. And as if it wasn't bad, he went to Sidonia over here, which is the city where the cross was invented, and married Jezebel, a daughter of a witch doctor. And he brings them to Samaria, to Israel. And King Omri gives the hillside of Samaria to the newly words as a gift. And Jezebel brought with her all the mess. And let me tell you guys, this is why you have to pray for your children. You'll be over here with your nice family, peaceful, and your daughter goes to college and marries some nuts. And he brings chaos in the house. So he comes and he gives them the hillside of Samaria. And from that day, from that day, witchcraft, idolatry, you name it, was in Israel. And the scripture says, Jesus says, go. You are married to five people. And you're living with the sixth one. You, you got to stop and really think about scripture. She was not just married to five men. And she was married to five detestable sins that God has. And she was living with the sixth. Here comes Jesus over here on his way. And he sits on the world that was dark because of grief. And he says, oh, woman, you have a destiny. Look at this woman. She says, this is the will of our grandfather. Our ancestors drank over here. And Jesus touches this woman. So we can actually say, because of grieving, revival in Samaria over here was started. So which means that if you can just stop for a moment and think about the pain that you have gone through, Lakisha. Think about the pain you have gone through. And God in his infinite wisdom, he comes and he says, I'm going to take that, mold it, form it, do something with it. And over here, I'm going to create something out of that. And years from now, years from now, when we are all gone to heaven, God says, oh, I'm about to do something phenomenal with your grief. If you can but just see what the Lord can do with grief. Listen, we are God's people. Don't be deceived with all this foolishness that's going out there. We are God's people. We are royal people. My grandmother had struck. This whole entire side was gone. When I went to visit her before she died, she said, son, when you come back next time to Zimbabwe, I'll be long gone. This is our goodbye right here. I love you. I appreciate the man of God you are. I'm so proud of you. And I know for a fact that I will never die. Because I get to live inside of you. The reality, guys. The reality, guys. Here's the reality. Every single person here was born between a mother and a father. Correct? And those two had a mother and a father. That's four. That's right. Eight. That's right. Sixteen. That's right. Thirty-two. That's right. Sixty-four. That's right. uh, One twenty-eight. Two fifty-six. Two fifty-six. Five Five twelve. One thousand and sixty-four. One sixty-four. Two forty-eight. Four thousand and sixty-four. 
12 generations ago, 4,064 people had to meet, fall in love, have a baby, meet, fall in love, have a baby, in order for you to sit here. So which means what's flowing inside of you is a generation of people that are living inside of you. So when my grandmother says, I will never die, because I know I will live inside of you. So she's laying on a deathbed. She's laying on the deathbed. She's talking to my mother. And I was grieving when I left because she had told me I'll be gone when I come back. Even though she died eight months later. I didn't tell anybody that's what she told me. I just knew. She's gone. Then my mother calls me. And she says, I was sitting next to her in the hospital. And she says to me, give me a piece of pen and a paper. I want to write something. So my mother's like, how are you going to write when you have stroke? This 86-year-old woman, she has struck this whole right-hand side. So my mother is frantically looking for a pen and a piece of paper. She can't find any. So my mother says to her, hey, I, we have these new phones. I'll just record you. She was like, no, I need a piece of pen and a paper. So she couldn't find a piece of pen and a paper. She lifted the right hand that it struck and started writing in midair. Whatever she was writing, God knows. She's done. She says to mother, hold my hand and walk with me. So mother's like, yo, you are in a bed. She says, hold my hand and walk with me. My mother wants to ask a few questions. And she's like, Gertrude, shh. Ten minutes go by. My mother is thinking, is she sleeping? What's going on? She's like, Gertrude, I am seeing one of the most remarkable scenes I ever seen. She says, oh my God, such beauty. And my mother's like, my mother's like what are you seeing? It's like, girl, oh, I'm seeing one of the most incredible sights I've ever seen. And she says, let go of my hand. You can turn back now. Because I'm already home. Where we are going is better. I know we cry for our loved ones, but I can guarantee you this. They are probably crying for us to get our ex together so we can join the number. It says, when Christ shall come, with shout of acclamation, and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and then proclaim, my God, God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul. My Savior God to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior. We are God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. 
Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! With every hand raised up, with every hand raised up, with every hand raised up, every hand. Lord, we stand here as your children. We acknowledge that you are our father and we are your children. We exist at your pleasure. We are yours. Our confidence is not in what we know and in our abilities, but our confidence is in the fact that we are in your hands. So as we stand here as your children, with all that goes on in our lives, the pain, the anguish, the sorrow, the things that we cannot describe or utter in words, we still stand here knowing that your name is a strong tower. We the righteous, we run into it and find safety. I pray for these your people that goes hurting hearts, those who are in pain and in mourning, God, may you send comfort. I pray, Lord, for your hand, for your hands. Your word tells us that there are angels in heaven bottling up our tears as a memorial of our pain. So I'm asking you, Lord, to do what seems impossible. Visit us, send help, send angels on assignment to touch and mend our broken hearts. Surely your word says you are close to the brokenhearted. So God Almighty, as we surely stand here in need of you, I ask you God to now come and touch these your people and mend broken hearts. Help us, help us, help us Lord to deal with things that we need to deal with. And the things we cannot deal with, send help. Where our efforts end, may we find strength in your presence. So we stand here with thankful hearts and acknowledging that for thine is your kingdom, the power and the glory forever. And ever, and ever, and ever. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a praise. 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 If you are in need of prayer, if you are in need of prayer, come on. If you are in need of prayer, I know we have ushers, everybody. If you are in need of prayer, come on. Prayer team, prayer team, come on.
Send him to die. To die. I say can take, take it, it in. in. That on the cross my, my burden let me bury. He bled and died, and died to take go away, away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. So as we are continuing in prayer, I'm going to say a prayer, a blessing over everyone in this space. If you want to come down for prayer, please feel free. But if it is on your heart to move now to be dismissed, you are surely welcome. We have our baptism candidates today. If you will meet us down to my left in front. And we're also going to have our campus pastors, leadership, and of course our prayer team will continue to be here for you. So as our hearts and minds prepare for dismissal, let me speak this blessing over you this morning. Father, we thank you for the relief in Jesus. God, we thank you that grief is not a sickness and shall be filled with your word, with prayer, comfort, and peace. God, we thank you for this vessel, your vessel, Pastor Zavai. Lord, we thank you for the message that you have delivered through him. God, we ask that you would be in front of us and stand behind us. Go with us as we are removed from this place. Let you not remove yourself from our hearts. Fill every gap. Fill every heart that's broken. Let us be comforted in your word, in your way, and in your will. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We love you. Amen. Family, be blessed. Hello, family, and welcome, guys. Welcome to Talk Back. I'm so excited to be with you today. When I tell you guys that was a word, that was an amazing word. So let's jump into it. Let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about what just took place, guys. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I, I just got tears out of my eyes because I 
am just so overwhelmed by the amazingness of that word, the comfort, the hope, the encouragement that has just taken place. We are in this series, When Disaster Strikes, and today we've been talking about grief, how to handle that grief, how to handle it properly, what takes place when we're grieving. Guys, let, let's get into it. I got my notes with me, so let's talk about it. One, he just talked about, you know, we're in this holiday season, and if you have lost loved ones before or even in years past, and maybe you're still in that grieving place, he has given us practical steps on what to do, how to handle it, what, how can we move from this place of grieving. And one of the things that stuck out to me was him talking about that we can't grieve forever. You know, and it's not to, to push past or say that our grief or how we feel is not relevant, but it's to let us know that God wants to move us from that place of grieving to the place where we have so much hope in Christ, because that's who we are in Christ. When the, our loved ones die and they know the Lord, then they are dying in Christ. So they are only asleep, they're not dead. He talked about the scripture about them being asleep in Christ. So if they if they are gonna be, you know, resurrected with Christ and they're asleep. And so that was so much comfort to me, you know, and I lost my father years ago and that just added even more comfort, you know, encountering the holidays and still missing them still thinking about them and so that and I pray that that encouraged you I know y'all put it in the chat let us know how you are feeling today how did that word minister to you and maybe you're not grieving but maybe you know someone that you can share this word with it is when I tell you such a relevant word in this season I know so many people that have lost loved ones but let's talk about some of the things that he talked about. Then one of the things that really, really stuck out to me, and I know that you guys can relate, is that not isolating. Y'all, we cannot. God did not create us to do life alone. God intended for us to be able to be comforted by other people. So don't shut down. Don't block other people out. Don't sit in the room by yourself. Yeah, I'm talking to you, that person that says, well, I just need to be by myself. No, you don't. You got to get around people because as he talked about earlier, the enemy, he seeks around as a roaring lion. And so he talked about the different things that what a lion does and how a lion moves and he talked about in the jungle that a lion goes after that person who is isolated that person who is injured that person who is all alone so you got to get out of that place and get around someone that loves you get around some people that will encourage you get around people that that want to embrace you and help you through what you're going through right now because the enemy is going to be more quick to attack you more prone to you because you're by yourself so you got to come out of that isolation and even for you encouragers there are some you on here that are encouragers to your heart. You love speaking a word to people. That lets us know that we got to have a word when we encounter people who are grieving. We got to be ready to encourage them. They're going through they have so much on their mind. And so we got to be ready to speak that life into them, to share that word of encouragement. Hey, you're going to you're gonna get through this. Hey, you're doing great. God loves you. God is with you. So, you know, I'm, talk, I'm talking to so many people, but let's talk again, just some another thing that he talked about, that, um, that God does not, um, that we're not experiencing pain for nothing. Oh my God, when I tell you guys that was such a word, that that pain that you're experiencing, that pain that, that, that I've gone through, um, I even lost a cousin recently, and I mean, I'm talking about it hit really, really dear at home. She was like a sister to me. When God said, when he said that God is not taking that pain and you're not experiencing that pain for nothing, that God is going to use it, and how he talked about how um, how he had erected that, that well, that he had built that well on behalf of Joseph. And it was that same well that generations later that the woman at the well that Jesus encountered that woman, y'all, when I tell you that was so profound, I never knew that. I never knew that. And when I tell you that word meant so much because that let me know that 
what I'm experiencing, what we see other people experiencing, what we um, know that we're even experiencing for ourselves, that God is going to take that very hurting thing, that very thing that's going on in your heart, he's going to use it. He's going to use it for his glory. He's going to use it to help someone else. And so when I tell you the remarkableness of the word that went for today, so, so profound, so, so dynamic, so right now in real time dealing with, God, how do I handle this? How do I handle this disaster so that I honor you? How do I get my mind out of just being in grief and move from grief to hope? And we have hope in Christ Jesus. We have hope in Christ Jesus. And, and something I want you guys to, to, to not move past. And that was when he said that we have to pray for our loved ones. Pray for those who, don't, who do not know the Lord. Pray for those who need to experience and encounter Christ. We have friends, we have loved ones, everyone around us. We know someone that needs to know Christ. And so it's not about them just receiving what you're saying. But he talked about, you know, in, in my notes when he said he talked about pray that Holy Spirit will speak to them. Y'all, when I tell you that was so profound, because sometimes we have it on us and I'm guilty of that. That we have people, you know, God, let them hear what I'm saying. No, Holy Spirit, you reveal to them who Christ is. So we got to go back and re -put out, refocus our mind and our attention that, you know what, it's all about God. It's not about us. It's not about what we say or what we do, but it's about them experiencing God for themselves. So Holy Spirit, I'm praying even if you're the one that's watching us right now, that Holy Spirit will reveal to you who God is. That you not just hear me, but that you hear Holy Spirit right now, even in that word. But when I tell you guys, I know that you guys enjoy this word. This word was so phenomenal. It was so impactful. Share it out with your friends. Let other people know. Let someone else that you know that's grieving hear this word. And they're going to replay it again today at five o'clock so you guys can catch this word again and when i tell you let the world know that you're being impacted by the word we here at the worship center we love you and we're so glad to have you here at talk back on behalf of bishop van and our wonderful and his wonderful wife dr ty we're so happy to have had you with us it has been an amazing sunday when disaster strikes how to grieve properly guys you got this Stay tuned, stay informed with the word, stay connected. We love you here at the, at the Worship Center Christian Church. You are amazing. I am your host, Minister Takaya Maddox. Excited to be with you again today. Y'all have an amazing week, an amazing Sunday. And y'all don't forget, watch this word again. Let it get in you. Let it get in you. God bless y'all. Have a great Sunday.